Simone Cipriani is the man who took me through the vast Kibura slum in Nairobi and made me feel, in his favourite word, a sense of joy and a sense of hope. You must think that is impossible, but as we watched together a Vivian Westwood signature orb emerging from a heap of scrap metal and a gas burner in a tiny shack, I began to understand that there was a possibility to turn this kind of work into something that was a product. In his role as the Ethical Fashion Initiative of the United Nations, Mr. Cipriani has brought his Italian leatherware skills to pan-African projects that have already changed the lives of 7,000 families. Simone, please come up and tell us how high fashion has come to be made in Africa. I'm not an alpinist as major Aleman, no, but <laughs> I made it. Thank you, such a wonderful introduction. Good morning, everyone. As Susie said, my name is Simone Cipriani. I work in Africa and in Haiti, producing luxury fashion in the slums. Do you think it's impossible? It is possible. What I'm talking about today to you is the beautiful handwork your customers crave. And it is done 100% in an ethical way. So what is luxury today? It is about responsibility. It is also about business. It's about profit. And about including everyone fairly in the fashion chain and with data to prove it. The success of our business lies with design plus data, just like yours. We make fantastic accessories. How can I say they are fantastic? Because we work with fantastic designers. We work with Stella McCartney, with Vivian Westwood, with the Australian duo Sassen Bide, with the Hollywood jeweler Chan Lu, with Oscar Metzevat of Osklen in Brazil. And we are a business. How do I say that? We work with such big businesses, such as Macy's in the US and Manor in Switzerland. But I'm also here to tell you that we produce quality products. How can I say quality? Let me tell you a thing. The pioneer of our work, the person who believed in us since the very beginning, our long-term customer, is Ilaria Venturini Fendi. Have you ever met a Venturini Fendi who is not obsessed with quality? I come from Tuscany, the most beautiful place in the world. I worked in the leather industry. Now, one day I'm in Paris to meet a designer, and the next day I'm walking in the Rift Valley in the company of some Masai friends. But I'm not here to spin stories on the romance of Africa. I'm here to talk about work. It is about creating work. We have already created work for thousands of people. It is about creating work through an infrastructure which allows you to work with us. It is about true luxury, which is sustainable, which is environmentally sound, and yet always desirable. What we do is to harness fashion as a vehicle out of poverty. We work with the poorest of the poor, but this is not pity, this is not charity, this is work. And you are our vital partners. So, welcome to Africa. Welcome to a vibrant continent which is the future of your business. Economic dynamo, such a beautiful definition. I'm a UN guy, we, we deal with data. I can tell you that by 2030, the 50% of African population will live in urban settings. And I'm telling you that the combined spending power of the new African middle class is going to be $1.3 trillion. We work with the stylists, the bloggers, the fashion editors of Africa. We work with those who know who your next customers will be. We do this not by leaving the poor behind. We work with the poor. We tap 
in the vibrant creativity of this huge amount of people, they have so much to offer to the fashion world. They have craft skills. They want to work. Our solid business infrastructure makes it possible. Work. Let the poor change their own lives. The huge rate of urbanization in Africa has created enormous slums. The one that you see, I hope, yes, is Kibera, home to a million people. Yet, I'm not here to tell you a sob story. The poor are reliable people. They survive out of incredible self-employment and entrepreneurial skills. We invest in the poor as they are the most important factor of growth for the humankind, not only for Africa. What happens when this enormous potential is connected to the global market? It happens that people can change their lives and, that, and the lives of their families. Some of the people we work with bring the skills of generations. But what they usually produce for the tourist market is not enough. When there is political instability, the market is gone. Working with their great designers, on the contrary, con being connected with the global market allows them to get out of this trap. We also work in rural settings, which is a huge logistical challenge, but we do it in order to contribute stopping this huge wave of migration to the slums. So, what's in it for you? Beautiful, ethical luxury with a touch of uniqueness. Handmade, yes, as the title of my presentation says, but not in a shack, in a proper place, in a decent working environment with appropriate equipment, not small quantities, the quantities which are suitable for the industry of fashion. We do business, and we do it in a new and dynamic environment. And what about profit? <laughs> this is not charity. We want you to make big profits. For this is about working with the private sector in a creative collaboration for mutual long-term gain. You cannot go it alone when working with the poorest of the poor. You would not move into business in Beijing without local knowledge. Poverty is also complicated. You need local knowledge. Even if you are responsible, even if you are good, how do you know that what you do is the right thing? How do you know how much to pay people? If you pay them too much, you spoil them. If you don't pay them enough, you don't allow them to live decently. We know what to pay. We pay fair wages. We pay a rate that rewards hard work. We make fashion fair. So what do we want? We want a percentage of your production. Maybe a small percentage. But we want to work long term with you. For when we start, we continue. In Africa, in difficult moments, during the political traumas, we don't disappear. You see, we are embedded in the civil society of Africa. We belong to it. We are part of it. So shall I say, work with us, it's an easy task. No, because this would be a lie. It takes a lot of time and commitment to achieve success together. Carmina Campus and Vivian Westwood know it. They have been with us for so many seasons. With Stella McCarthy, we've just begun. What is Stella to us? She's a working mother with a beautiful brand, a mother juggling work and home, just like the women who make these bags. We want to link what we do further to PPR's proactive strategy of accountable sustainability. Monsieur Pinot, nous sommes ici. But uh, there is no exclusivity in poverty. 
Mr. Rupert of Richmond, we are here too. Monsieur Arnaud, we welcome you, but we welcome everyone else in this room. The fashion business today is a serious business, and so are we. We use design plus data to measure the impact of what we do. A lot of people talk about change. Few, like us, are able to measure it. We are a United Nations program. I say this again because we have a mandate and the expertise to measure what is important. Vivian Westwood and Andreas Krontaler posed for Jürgen Teller in Kibera. That was great. You may think that was controversial. You may wonder what local people thought. We didn't wonder, we asked. In English, in Swahili, in Masai. Let me tell you one of the answers I got. It's very positive message that we do not strive and struggle on our own. This is the power of fashion. So what can we do for you? We offer you the chance to get back to true luxury business. Consumers use fashion to build their identities in the world of today. But they also face a world of tomorrow which is not sustainable. Consumers see climate change. They see environmental catastrophe. Our glamour is also about working with consumers to spread the message that change is possible. We tell them you hold the key in what you buy. It is about shifting your identities from egotism to engagement. The luxury world is traditionally associated with heritage and quality, with the responsibility of working with artisans who are in well-defined and established communities producing pieces of art that last a whole lifetime. This is exactly what we do with you. Let us seize this opportunity together. Let us be leaders in a world that needs leaders to believe in. Let's work together. Also on product development, we guarantee a regular supply of information, of new materials. We can offer a wealth of natural fibers, of inventive recycling. Sometimes, what we have that is new is very old. Let me give you an example. We have leather tanned in the ancient way of the Borana, using tea leaves and acacia bark. No chrome, no chemicals. It's a tough, rough, masculine material which would be perfect for men's accessories. We will also help you to communicate a truly luxurious story to your customers around the world. These are some of our successes so far. We also provide the moving images you need for the online world. We are here to support you in selling these beautiful products wherever you work, from New York to Tokyo. Link your network with ours. We are not naive. Come with us, not to change your life, but to change the way in which you work. Come with us at your own expenses, because we do not offer any free trip. Although, free of charge, we offer the beautiful, vast African night sky. Susie has already come with us. When she was with us in Africa, which was an incredible experience, she saw one of the bags we were developing, and she told us, you must have a zip here. This bag is for women who live in London and Paris, where there are pickpockets, not in Rome, but in London and Paris. So you need a zip. So now we have a bag and a zip. Ladies and gentlemen, now I present you the Mama Susie bag. <laughs> I thank you, Susie, for inviting me here today 
to represent the wonderful creativity of thousands of artisans from Nairobi to Gilgil to Laikipia to Ouagadougou to Accra to Bamako and to everyone else here I say when do we start working together? Let's start today. This is not charity. It's just work. Thank you. Uh, there are questions coming in um, for... Uh, Mr. Cipriani, but I want to have the pleasure now of asking Ilaria Venturini Fendi to join us. Yes, she's another of those Fendis. She's Sylvia's sister. And she, as you've just heard from Simone, is an extraordinary person because she was one of the first designers to believe not just in the handwork of Africa, but in that continent's natural sense of recycling waste products and giving them a new life. Welcome. <laughs> So, Sylvia, uh, not Sylvia, even yeah. Ilaria. <laughs> um, Thank you, Susie, for inviting me. So, tell us about Carmina Campus, your line of bags. How did you start the brand and what are its aims and ideas? Okay, I start from the beginning. So, I grew up uh, in a fashion family and it was almost natural for me to work in creativity. But uh, after some time, uh, um, I started to change my life in something different and so I left my family company and uh, uh, following an old dream that uh, uh, bought uh, an old uh, abandoned farm uh, 10 minutes from here and uh, so I changed uh, my, my work. Uh, I, uh, I was a farmer and still I am a farmer but uh, after, after some time, the need of creativity reemerged, and uh, I, to support an NGO that uh, works uh, for women's human rights, I started to uh, work on some discarded conference bag, uh, adding them and uh, embellish them with uh, um, different material that I found around. And uh, so is uh, how Carmina Campus uh, uh, was born in 2006. Uh, and uh, I, um, I put these values in, uh, in this work. And I started to uh, work with uh, reusable materials uh, to make uh, high quality products like handbags, accessory, furniture in Italy. But uh, I also started uh, a project, uh, uh, my own project in Africa, in Cameroon, in uh, 2007. Um, in spite of, of my effort, this project didn't work and I had to stop it. And uh, so what uh, I learned uh, from this experience is that in Africa you cannot improvise and you need uh, a, a local uh, partner that uh, can help you that help you and also the workers. And uh, finally in 2009, thank you for, to Alta Roma, I met uh, the International Trade Center. And uh, um, finally I restarted to work in Africa, in Kenya. Um, and uh, um, with the, the International Trade Center we share the, the idea that work is the, uh, the most uh, aid, aid for these people. And the motto that Simone uh, told before, not charity, just work, uh, is printed uh, on many of the bags that uh, I make in Africa. Um, so um, we worked very hardly for the beginning. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Can I just stop you here for a moment? I'd like to hear from yeah. Simone. What it was like? How, how did you did you meet here in Italy? Did you meet out, out there in Kenya? How did how did it work? 
It was quite a strange thing because I, went, uh, uh, I wanted to meet Ilaria because I knew the work she was doing and she wanted us to work together in Africa. She was already engaged in Cameroon. And so, but, but I was busy in those days. So I called Ilaria over the phone. She was very, answer to, uh, she was very kind to answer. And, but the nice thing is that I said, look, um, it will take a couple of weeks to me to come to Rome. And then she said, are you joking? I want to see you tomorrow. I need to work. This is about work. Uh, do you want to waste my time? So I said, this lady is very tough. And, uh, and this is why well, I went the, to Rome. The, the second or the third uh, phone that you told me, <laughs> that you uh, gave me. <laughs> and, uh, and I had to go to Cameroon together. When we were in Cameroon, we had a lot of brainstorming. And they told her, you have to come to Kenya. This is how it started. This is how it started. So, Ilaria, I'd like to understand something here. Did you get your ideas about recycling? Were some of them inspired by African people? Because, you know, we've all seen and we know whenever you go to Africa, it's amazing to see how there is no waste. Everything is used and reused. Yes, because um, it's uh, strange, uh, but uh, in Africa there are not so ways to reuse uh, um, because they use uh, everything until this end. And so in Africa, I use local materials like uh, um, the canvas of safari tents uh, or military blankets or uh, uh, simply um, African fabrics like uh, uh, kanga and uh, Masai shukas. But uh, I think it's, if it's the material is poor, I, um, I make the same uh, uh, attention to the... Uh, the quality to the, uh, but the, the, the thing that uh, I think it's important uh, is the help of skilled artisans that make the difference of this pro in, on this project. I, I want to be fair to Italy here. After all, your family brand Fendi is pretty well known in Italy. And when I've come to see your collections, which I've seen some beautiful things, You've also told me that there are some things that are actually made or put together in Italy, is that right? Yes, uh, at the beginning I, I make uh, semi-finished things in Africa and after, I, because uh, I make high quality products. It's for this that uh, in the beginning is, it was very difficult uh, to work uh, with uh, these people that uh, are not so skilled. And uh, so, uh, at, um, at the beginning, I started to uh, make some self-finished pieces, and after, I, I put together with some uh, Italian artisan that also uh, I brought with me in Africa. Uh, as you could see uh, in Africa in, on your visit, I constantly give uh, giving these people uh, uh, technical advice, uh, designs, and also videos um, with some Italian artisans that work with me in Carmina Campus that uh, also uh, uh, I brought uh, in, uh, in Kenya. Yes. Well, I think this is an example of how Italians in general are generous in spirit. And I hope that some other people who are here, Italian or any other brands, will think of this and think of this whole approach and how you can actually elevate the level of the workmanship that you can get out of Africa if you are involved in the process. And at the same time, of course, you are elevating the lives of the people who are making these things because the better their skills, the more they get paid. So, um, now, I've just got a question here that's just come in on Twitter but doesn't appear to have... A come onto my phone. Um, yes, this is from, this is from uh, on IHT Rendezvous, which is um, our website, which is covering a great deal of this conference. So I hope all you people are going to look at it, IHT Rendezvous. And this is a question for Simone Cipriani from Kel Kelsey from Pittsburgh, so this is from America. Can you explain how the companies involved in the Ethical Fashion Initiative will be sharing their ethical production and manufacturing process with their end consumers? How can consumers ensure that what they're purchasing is having a positive social and environmental impact at every step of that product supply chain? It's an excellent question. Uh, consumers can know the exact story of what they get through the production processes we manage 
in a very simple way. They can get it because, as I said in the presentation, we measure the impact of what we do. So when we produce something, we also supply the fashion house that work with us and the distributors with all the story behind the bag. The story is made of data. We say data, not data, because it's Latin, and we are in Rome, and so we say data. The data behind a single piece of fashion are the most important thing. What is the environmental impact? What is the impact of people? How it contributes to the welfare of people? All these stories are told, so a consumer has to ask the story behind the product in the shop, in the retail outlet. Our products bear the story. This is how the consumer can be involved, through actively asking about the story behind the product. What's the story behind this bag? Well, I think that um, I can ask some of these questions when we talk to Vivian Westwood this afternoon, but I'd just like to ask Ilaria one last question. Do you want your purchases, the consumers, to know that their the bags were made in Africa, or do you want them to feel it was made in Africa? In other words, do you want to say on the outside, made by hands in Africa, and as you have your slogan also, um, no charity, just work, or do you want it just to be a feeling that they have, an emotion, that this is a special object? Do you want to announce Africa or not? Uh, no, I think not. Uh, I think that uh, um, it's a uh, good uh, to me to think that it uh, um, is like a made in Italy pro uh, object. Uh, you can uh, uh, say the, the difference. Well, made in Italy has become a brand. I think this has been a most inspiring conversation, and I thank you so much for enlightening us about the promise of Africa that is no longer a promise, it's a reality. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you.